Hi, everybody. Welcome to Eternity Church one more time. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you'll be blessed by time of worship and time of reflection and getting into the Word of God as well. Of course, you know that we are back in church in person at the moment. And so if you're able to get along to Norwich and come along to Eternity Church right there, we, we'd just love to see you. All right. So come on, let's get ready. Let's worship the Lord together. Rushing wind, fire of 
Hello, Eternity Church. Good morning. I hope you're all having a wonderful Sunday. And today I'm here to give you the announcements. So the first announcement is the Connect Groups. Connect Groups will be running as usual on a weekly basis. If you'd like to join, feel free to get in contact with Pastor Alfred and he'll give you all the details. His details should be on the screen right now. The second announcement is the midweek prayers. This will be run on a Wednesday at 7 p.m. Now the details should be on the screen or better still you can find it on our Facebook page. And finally the third announcement is our newly formed family meetings. These will begin on the 5th of July. Now these family meetings if you consider yourself a member of the Eternity Church or part of our family, then this is open to you. This is not exactly a church service, but is an informal meeting whereby we can gather and we can discuss ideas on how we can move forward as a family within the Eternity Church. So if you feel that this is relevant to you, or if you feel that you would very much benefit from attending, feel free to attend any of the four available dates and that are yet to come up. These details should be on the screen or you can find this on the Facebook page. Feel free to come and attend based on your availability or when you are most suitable to come along and have a casual and informal chat um, with Pastor Paddy and um, with all the other elders and all the other members within the church. So thank you very much. That's all the announcements for this week and I'd love to wish you all a wonderful week ahead. See you. As we come into our time to receive tithes and offerings right now, we're reminded of the fact that when we're doing this, we are equipping the church of God for the kingdom of God and to impact the world around us. And so once again, we need to put out an impassioned appeal for the tithes and offerings to be brought into the storehouse. The Bible says that there is a commanded blessing when that happens, when we return to the Lord, the portion that is his, he returns to us the portion of the blessing that is ours. And so if you are in any way connected to Eternity Church, please let's bring our tithes and offerings in. If not, and you'd just like to sow into the work of God here that facilitates our various ministries and facilitates our ability to run the building and also our outreach into various countries via missions. We'd really appreciate your offering. So all the details are up on the screen. Let's receive our tithes and offerings. So, come on, we're going to get into the Word of God right now, and the declaration is up on your screen. I declare today that I'm ready to hear from God. I'm tuning my heart into His Word. I believe that Jesus is Lord, that His promises are true, and that His Word lasts forever. I believe that what I hear today could change my life, because my best days are yet to come in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, right now, we're just humbled by your kindness to us, by your generosity to us, by your loving kindness and mercy and grace, Lord God. We, we just can't fathom it. 
but at the same time, Lord Jesus, we know, we know that you want each one of us to walk in a commanded blessing that comes from you. And right now, Lord God, we pray that you'd open up our minds as we get into this word and that you would bless us as we do in Jesus' name. Amen. So I've entitled my message today, To Obey is to Release. To Obey is to Release. I find so many times that we are not released because we lack the obedience. We lack sometimes the courage to step out in faith. God is wanting to release things into our lives. And we've just talked a little bit earlier in the service about the tithes and offerings. And when there comes a time of releasing, it is because, that is from God to us. It is usually because we first obeyed him. And so obedience starts the chain of, of, of events. And to obey him is to release. Now I want to read a very well-known scripture from Ezekiel 37, from verse 1 down to verse 10. It says, The hand of the Lord was on me. And he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come alive. You will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, um, breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. You know, this has been an account that has fascinated me right through my ministry years because of its multi-layered capacity to teach and to impact and to instruct. Ezekiel was a young prophet around about 25 to 30 years old in exile in Babylon. And he suddenly gets this vision that was so real. It was as if he was standing right there in Dry Bone Valley. And bones speak of something that once was there. They speak of a structure that existed, a life that was lived and somehow has now ended. So he was looking at something that had been and God was looking at him and saying, do you think this can yet be again? Let me tell you something. If God has done it before, he can do it again. If God has moved miraculously in your life, he can do it again. If God has provided for you exponentially, God can do it again. If God has broken through for you in your past, he can do it again. If he has healed you, redeemed you, lifted you up can do it again and he was saying to Ezekiel can I do this again <laughs> look at the dry bones look around you he says there that he led um, Ezekiel through the valley he led, he led him back and forth in other words take a good look take stock evaluate everything that you're seeing there's something going on here and he looked at these bones and he must have seen the devastation. He must have, there must have been a very unusual, almost creepy experience for him, seeing bones lying there. I wonder if you've ever stood amongst the dead, dry bones of a relationship that is no more, of a dream that has died, of a hope that seemed alive once before, but now seems lifeless. And there was Ezekiel standing amongst that which had once lived but was now lifeless. He would have seen skulls and um, thigh bones and uh, arm bones and ribs and, and spines. And, and looking at all of this lying there, it must have been quite a disturbing sight for him. And the one thing that gave him comfort, <clears throat> irrespective of where he was, was that the hand of the Lord was upon him. I put it to you that we can survive any set of circumstances when the hand of the Lord is upon us. I also want you to know that the hand of the Lord is always upon us and it never leaves us. 
God will take us through different seasons, different chapters in our lives, and each time his hand is upon us. And that is the key. Where you are right now, if your faith is in God, his hand is upon you. It might not feel like it, but I want you to know that his hand is not a severe, hard hand that hits. His hand is not a hand that assaults, that causes pain. His hand is a gentle, loving hand that leads and guards and guides. His hand is a hand on your shoulder that walks with you through the valleys of life. No matter where you are or what you've had to endure, if the hand of the Lord is upon you, you are safe and you are guided. You are watched over and you can be at peace. This, however, was a test of Ezekiel's obedience, but it was also a test of his perspective because God was actually asking him questions saying, what do you see? Can this live? What, what, what do you observe here? You see, when we walk with God, we need to get a perspective change. Ezekiel could have just looked at the devastation and said, well, that's what it is. And that's all that this ever will be. He asks Ezekiel if the bones can live. And in doing so, he was setting the scene for the miracle because he was creating an expectation of something. Do you live expectant? Do you live with the constant assurance that Jesus is real and is working on your behalf? Because I can tell you, that's not easy. <laughs> that's, that, that's not an easy thing to do. We tend to focus more on the dead bones in the valley than we do on the God who walks there with us. It's the perspective change. It's Peter on the, on the water walking towards Jesus. Are you looking at the storm or are you focused on Jesus? Are you keeping your eyes on Jesus? And God is saying to Ezekiel, you seeing these bones? Don't forget who's walking with you through the bones. Don't forget who's walking with you through the valley. Don't forget who's walking with you through this seemingly traumatic event, the seemingly dead landscape. I'm walking with you through this, where all around seems to have ended, seems to be depression and destruction, depravity. He's saying to Ezekiel, but I'm with you. And let's create the atmosphere for the miraculous. If you want to create the atmosphere for the miraculous, you need to get into the obedience. Because when we're obeying God, God comes into play into the situation. Do you live expectant for him to do something? Or have you long ago given up and assumed that God will probably never do anything ever again? You know, we tend to focus on the dead bones, but it's a perspective change. Whatever your valley is right now, are you focused on the hopelessness that seems to lie on the valley floor? Or can you focus on the God who walks there with you? Ezekiel was being brought into a whole new level of obedience because he now had to speak a word to that which could not hear. He had to bring a change where change seemed impossible. Have you ever had to deal in the realms of the impossible? He was about to see a vision of the miraculous and was about to see how God can release something new in the, spirit, the spiritual in our lives. God can release something new in the spiritual, but it means obeying him in the physical. Because, and I want us to understand this together, physical obedience brings spiritual release. Physical obedience brings spiritual release. God himself told us that obedience is better than sacrifice. Why? Because to obey is to release. You obey God with your tithes and offerings, there comes a release. You obey God with your generosity, there comes a release. You obey God to bring a word of encouragement to somebody else, there comes a release. You obey God to do whatever it is he's put on your heart to do in church, there comes a release. That's how it works. God himself told us that he would much prefer that we obey rather than anything else. People, these bones were dry. They were daunting. They were depressing. But when we prophesy, we speak to the potential, not to the actual. We're speaking into something that has not yet come to pass. The potential is the unreleased power of everything that could be. It is the evidence of that which is as yet unseen, but it's there. It's just that we can't see it. <laughs> the graveyards are full of potential. People who died without fulfilling their potential, they went to the grave full, full of everything that they could still have done. 
but fear held them back. Lack of opportunity held them back. They went to the grave full of potential. When I die, I've always said, when I die, I want to die empty. I want to die empty having done everything that I could with everything that I had. God told Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones. He was told to speak to the potential. The bones were evidence that something has lived there before. There is potential for something to happen. But bones don't usually become flesh. It's usually the other way around. Usually the body will decompose down to bones. Now we're talking about not a decomposition, but a composition. And I want you to know that God is a great composer. He will take that which seems to have been stripped down to bare bones and he will rebuild something in your life if you allow him to do that. Can you speak to your potential and tell it to live in Jesus' name? What is that thing that you're holding on to in your heart where you feel I, you've got something from God? You feel like you've got something that, that, is, that is a talent, a gift. You feel like you've got something and you, you're pregnant with that potential. Would you speak to that potential right now and command it to live and to come forward and to find its time and to find its purpose, to find its target? Can you speak to the potential in other people and see what can start coming together in them just because you obeyed and your obedience brought release? Ezekiel spoke the unspoken to the dead and dejected and it brought life. Imagine what an impact we can have on the lives of other people around us, to those that are spiritually dead, to those that are spiritually bankrupt. And along comes you and you're walking through dry bone valley maybe the place where you work where you study where you live where you shop is like dry bone valley because there are people around you who are well-meaning and and lovely people but they spiritually bankrupt there's something that has gone wrong there's something that has lived but has now died do we have that within us to speak into that potential and be somebody that just encourages someone else i don't mean launch into a long prophecy in the middle of the supermarket I'm not saying that. I'm saying, can we just make a difference by lifting other people up and encouraging people and speak to the potential of who they are? As parents, we get to speak to the potential of our children every day. As family members, we get to speak into the potential of those we live with every day. We get to address that. Ezekiel spoke the unspoken to the dead and dejected, and it brought life. What has been unspoken in your life? Has there been something that has never been said to you? Have you never been told you are loved? Have you never been told, hey, I'm proud of you, well done? Have you never been told these things? Would you come into the loving arms of Jesus who brings salvation and redemption for those whose hearts have been broken? What is dead and dejected in your heart? Who is dead and dejected in your world and just needs a word of encouragement? Ezekiel didn't do anything grand. He just obeyed and commanded and he commanded something to live and suddenly stuff started to happen around him. Do you see the order though? The first thing he had to do was he had to speak to the bones and the bones started to live. He had to speak into that which he could see. And then once they had all knit together into human form, he was then told to prophesy to the, to, to the, to the wind that they would start to breathe. Can you see that before he spoke to that which is unseen, he had to first get it right in the seen realm. He had to first obey with what was in his hands to do before God could give him what was in his heart to see. And he would have wanted to see this army now living. Let me tell you this, before God moves something in the spiritual, we've got to start obeying God in the physical. And if you can't get it right in the physical, God might never give us that authority in the spiritual. You want to do great things for God, but there are aspects of your life that you can change right now. You want to bring change with great authority, then start dealing with what can be seen and God will give you the authority with what cannot be seen. He prophesied to the bones and then he prophesied to the breath. That is what God does in our lives. That is how God moves in our lives. Obey in the physical and see the results in the spiritual. Constantly doing that which displeases God cannot bring the release that you're looking for. God wants to unleash his power and his authority in your life, but you can't even wash the dishes. You can't even tidy your room. You can't even arrive to a meeting on time. And God is saying, how can I trust you with these greater spiritual authoritative things when in the, in the natural realm, I can't trust you with anything. 
Get doing what is in the physical. Speak to the bones that you can see. And God will bring the authority in the spiritual so that you can speak to the breath that you cannot see. Physical obedience will bring spiritual release. This is a spiritual principle that cannot be ignored. It will always bear fruit. Get the, the little things that are in your hand. Get those things right with God. God sees your heart attitude. God will then start to build on that foundation. And when you're getting it right, when, you, when you're obeying God in the physical, there comes a spiritual release. I want to speak that over your life right now. That there will come a spiritual release as you start to trust God and start to move forward in faith with God. You're in dry bone valley right now, but you could be surrounded by an army of God's blessing, an army of God's provision. I want you to know that out, out there in this world, there is there's an army of God waiting. It's just in dry bone format. It needs to have the spirit of God added to it. It needs the saints of God rising up and bringing authority and bringing power and bringing a word in season. We trust in God for that. And I know that God's going to move in your life. Won't you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much. And all our authority comes from you. Everything we have comes from you, Lord Jesus. We just stand in awe of you, of what you're able to do. God, that you're able to take the dry bones of our respective lives and turn it into something beautiful. And for that, we honor you. I pray right now, Father God, for every person watching this, that your Holy Spirit would move deeply in their lives right now. That you would cause this valley that they're in to start to come to life, to start to knit together, to start to breathe with spirit breath. Start to breathe and flow with the spirit wind of God. And we give you all the honor, all the praise and all the glory, Jesus. In your precious name, amen. If you'd like to give your life to Jesus, you want to hand your life over into new management, won't you give your life to him right now? All you've got to do is say, Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I admit that I need you. I need you and I choose to believe that you are God. And I ask you to forgive me for all my wrongdoings up to now. Help me to get this right. And help me to create something new in my expectation of what you can do in my life. And we just thank you so much for your time right now. Thank you for being part of us here at Eternity Church. Hopefully we'll see you again in person sometime soon. But have an amazing week. God bless you all.